So this is 48, I'm sorry, 46XX Springfield Avenue. We're going to do a little demonstration of first alert, one link, smoke detector, wireless interlinking, uh, residential fire, and carbon monoxide protection system. And as we move down through the house, we'll check out some of the work I did here. It was a partial rewire, replacement of all knob and tube, but not trying to meet the current code enforced in the city of Philadelphia, which is National Electric Code 2008 edition, adopted uh, here in 2011. And uh, so we have a smoke detector and combination carbon monoxide detector here. It's going to trigger the rest of the house wirelessly. This is a battery only unit, but it's been uh, programmed to communicate with the other units in the house. This one's pretty loud. You hear other units beeping. That's a hardwired unit that beeps when it's triggered by a test. In the base, in the attic here, that's the units uh, sounding. We've got a switch here in the top of the attic stairs. The utility room is the closest the programming had to attic, which is what that is. So the owner just has to be informed. So it said smoke, carbon monoxide, it's ready to detect. zero carbon monoxide so every time you test it it tells you what the highest level detected since the last test was now I've got three-way switching for the attic that's the standard on any stairway where I install switches now coming down we installed three-way switching for the downstairs Three-way switching for the local floor. And we've got other testers here. This is another wireless interlinking unit. It's a hardwired one, so it doesn't know where it is. But you hear the other units saying that they're activated. And you hear all hell break loose. You really want to get the heck out of here. Triggered. It's a standard hardwired. It's not a one link, but it is linked wired with thrift wires. And you can configure hybrid systems. Uh, I actually still need to program this one. That's why it's not sounding. But you can configure hybrid systems with combinations of wired and wireless interlinks so the hardwired one link type device can form a bridge between isolated areas of uh, a home that have been remodeled at different times my experience is that the wired aren't even worth dealing with the battery ones are the ones that can program where they are so that if they trigger some toast in your kitchen or something you know which which of your eight or ten devices caused the trigger so that seems more useful for preventing false alarms and people just getting fed up and ignoring them than a hardwire detector that doesn't know where it is so moving down through this beautiful old Victorian with uh, new lights installed in this hall originally it was a center fixture it was too old-fashioned we added two, a second fixture and moved with them both they can both be switched here locally you can switch on and off the upstairs lights from here at the center landing 
I'm going to switch on and off the downstairs lights. That's actually electric code. And most of these houses in West Philly, even the original wiring, was that way. But it's so old that people lose track of how the wiring is supposed to connect and your switches no longer work. This is a stereo cabinet in the works. It was uh, framed through the wall into a closet behind to allow these deep stereo components to sit enough back that they're not sticking out the front of the shelf. Once they're all set up, they will uh, tuck nicely in there and have some kind of a fascia filling up whatever gap remains from the components installed. That's a new cripple shelf installed by James Kasturki uh, coordinating with me and so that's gonna because I eliminate I crippled the shelf that was there he's created a header for a smaller shelf to fit over there to the right in this room if we had more money for the project I would have had a switch at this door but this door probably won't get used much in this room the lights not so hot but you can see the back of the cabinet it's gonna have a trim on that hole in the wall where the wires come through they enter the cabinet the cabinet has a removable back with vented ports on the top and there's an outlet here in the closet for everything to plug into so it really minimizes the uh, wires that will show up in the living room one of the things that makes this all possible is a little secret hatch and that allows a conduit to bring cable TV and speaker wire for the rear speakers through the joist bay here running perpendicular to the floorboards to the exterior outside this window the direct TV coax cable enters the weatherproof box there on the exterior outside that wall there and it's a big enough conduit that a cat5 cable or additional speaker wires or signal cables whatever wires for speakers throughout the house down to the basement and into the first floor room could be added at any time the money wasn't there initially so that's something they can do one interesting feature here in the master bedroom is a kill switch for the photo controlled porch lights outside I still have to install the photo control on that fixture I'm going to collect my receptacle tester here, indicating two lights for uh, ground and neutral and correct polarity. And moving on, I'm going to turn off the upstairs. We've got, besides this switch, we've got another coordinating switch at the other end of the room, newly wired. Because there is an add-on deck out that door. And there's also an added interior light switch for the floodlight, providing light for that deck. One of the things we put on the deck from the stereo cabinet is via the conduit to the exterior and the floorboards was exterior speakers will be on the AB switch of the amplifier in the entertainment center here we have again lots of switches I always try to keep switches a minimum of three in any location I might if I had to have more switches add another switch here or use something like the radio RA-2 system it would have a single control with buttons that affect all the lighting you would want to ever control from this location. 
So again, we can turn on and off the lights above the stairway that we're at. On and off the lights at our local stairway. And in this case, we can turn on and off the lights entering the first floor front room. Now again, the money wasn't here for smoke detectors throughout, but the first alert one link system is one that the homeowner can add to and extend on their own. If they do more renovations or if they feel like the first and second floors need more coverage. But it seems that they have an alarm system with coverage here in the basement and on the second floor. And that triggers alarm system control panels on the first floor and the second floor. So between the two systems, even though they're not coordinated with each other, I think they've got good coverage. Here we've got a detector that's correctly identifying itself as the basement. And we'll test that. You hear the beep of hardwire detectors going off. And the sounding of the alarm. That gives you time to get your ears away from the loudness. The smoke test. Carbon monoxide test. And it's identifying the location where the trigger happened. And again, reporting zero ppm, parts per million of carbon monoxide detected since the last test, or possibly the life of the device. The instructions would tell you which that is. And here we've got a beautiful crystal chandelier installed in a floor that needs some paint. We uncovered some plumbing work that needed to be done in the course of the electric. And that concludes our tour of some basic rewiring of an old Victorian in West Philadelphia and some lighting and some interlinking smoke and carbon monoxide detectors. Thanks.